Today's message is how to activate the ability to love. Hello everyone, this is Pastor Joe, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries. Thank you for joining us for our Sunday message, Sunday service. Um, first, I would like to do a, a short shout out for some people that have been following or listening. Um, Mark, Lois, and uh, Ross, and Myrna, and uh, Joey and Dave, Virginia, my wife, Glenn and Sonia, Marie, Akira, Priscilla, uh, Christine, Jennifer, Arthur, Joanne, Mike and Barbara, Paul and Tammy, MJ, Christian and Jane, Jack, Victor, Ray, DJ, Jeremiah. And I'll stop there because I, I could go on forever. Today's message is a continuation of the message that I gave Wednesday, which how to conquer hate with the power of love. And God just has me here with this. And I don't know, we might just be talking about love all the time. I, I don't know, we'll see. The power of love. The world is so busy with hate now. So today's message is going to, we're really going to focus on chapter 15 of John, the book of John, when Jesus talks about um, him being the vine and where the branches. And to anyone, uh, anyone who's not a believer, you wouldn't be familiar with this. And if you're a believer, let's get more familiar with it. Because um, today's message is how to have the ability to love. You know, we're fighting back the enemy of hate with love. But are we fully operating in that? And the only way to fully operate in that is to be connected to the vine. I call it, I call it the Jesus juice. If you don't have that Jesus juice flowing in you, you're just not going to be really good at loving. Because loving is not just some mysterious thing. Love is a verb. Love is something you do. It comes from your heart, but it's active. Uh, if you think about it, love is the core of life. It's the core of everything. God is love. God made love, he is love. He made us because of love. He loves us. He had plans for us before we were even born. He loves us that much. He loves us so much that he made us in his image and likeness. He loves us so much he gave us Jesus, sacrificed Jesus on the cross. Jesus loves us so much that he died for us on the cross and took that torture. He loves us so much, he's patient. God and Jesus are, are so patient with us, which is one of the attributes of love. Actually, we did this the other day, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again right now, okay? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And Apostle Paul, you know, he's speaking to the church in Corinth and he's speaking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how none of them are worth anything. The gift of prophecy, the gift of miracles and healings, the gift of speaking in another language, the gift of interpreting. All these gifts, he said, are worth, are worth nothing. It's like a noisy clang. It's, it's, it's has no value if you don't do it with love, if you don't have to give, give out the gift of love. Love is more important than anything. And, and Apostle Paul was speaking this, and of course, Christians know this scripture. If you're not a Christian, listen to this. This is, this is out of God's word. This is um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 
I'm going to go to verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous, nor boastful, or proud, or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never dies. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. I think I read this Wednesday. And if you're not a believer and you're joining us here today, that's, that's what love is. A little sidebar here. Wednesday's message, conquering hate with the power of love. This is like really serious. Hate is so busy in the world right now. And it's so demonic. There's many world leaders, many corporate leaders, there's many people, men and women in positions of great power and, and power to make decisions, power to control finances, power to control populations. And there's many of these leaders are not believers. Therefore, demons can inhabit them, not just mess with them, but literally inhabit them. They could be demon possessed. This is like, you're gonna have to, this is a strange message on love, right? But it's real. This is what we're dealing with. This, this, these battles is, are heavenly battles. But God has us here until we get to heaven someday. God has us here to populate heaven. He has us here as Christians to speak Jesus to people so they can come, they can hear the word and they can feel the Holy Spirit talking to them and touching them and give their lives to Christ to become children of God and be in heaven someday. <laughs> so, there's a lot of hate out there, and some of it's like really direct from the enemy, Satan himself, and he's got people in position and power, spreading hate amongst populations, amongst people. So we need to be aware of that. It's not just random, this hate. Now back to what we can do. A little, a little sidebar here is I did a little bit of research and in America, there's, and this is statistics, four or five years old. In America, there's one million youthful gang members. Why are we talking? We're talking about love. Why are we talk about gangs? Because of the lack of love, and because of how successful the enemy is in pushing out hate, you have a lot of hurt, misguided young people all over the world. I'm just using this statistic for America, and you have a lot of these hurt young people. And the average age for joining a gang in America. Different, st different studies are between 13 and 15, the average age. And by 19, they don't join. And the average lifespan in a gang is two to three years. Of course, when they leave, if they leave alive, they leave broken, a lot more broken than they came in. They think when they're joining a gang, they're gonna be loved because they don't have love in their life or they've been bullied or they've been bullied. So when they come, to, so, so when these young people come into a gang, they're, they're hurt. They're vulnerable. It's a, it's a vulnerable child. And they, they're there seeking love and protection and approval by their peers. And of course, that's not what they get. They get destroyed. Um, if these young people experienced true love, biblical love, They wouldn't be in a gang. Um, 
uh, in America, there's 400,000 approximately new youth join gangs since 400,000 leave. 400,000 in, 400,000 out. In St. Louis, the average, in St. Louis, the average age of a youth joining a gang is 11 years of age. So, America, Christians, the enemy's busy. This is just one area I'm showing. One area. The enemy's busy using hate to grow more hate. So today's message is about coming to Jesus. We can't Everyone, we can only love so much. We've got so much of this on us that the only way we can really walk in the power of love and to really have success against the enemy of hate is through Jesus. We can't do it on ourselves, on our own. So my, my point about bringing up the gangs and the world leaders is that the enemy is busy with hate everywhere really busy so we need to be busy using the best weapon we have against the enemy which is love and a couple of uh, side points here but let's i'm going to pray for a second father god please search our hearts you know what's in our hearts only you really know. Father God, as you search our hearts, I ask you to reveal to us what's in the way. What's in the way of us being better connected to the vine? What is in the way of us bearing fruit for you? Please reveal this to us now. As I speak your words, as I'm speaking this message, reveal to all of us what needs improvement, what's in the way. Reveal to us, Father God. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Also, this message is about love. <laughs> Don't let a sin that's in your life stop you from loving God. Also, don't gossip. Gossip ends up spreading hate, not love. We need to teach <clears throat> peace and not violence. And that's what Jesus teaches. The world right now teaches violence and hate. And also, as you can do, what's with this guy? As believers, as Christians, as followers of Christ, why do we entertain ourselves? Some of you aren't going to like this. Why do we entertain ourselves so much on violence? Violence. TV programs, Netflix, um, HBO, the movies. A lot of violence. More than ever. Serious, bad, evil, graphic violence. We entertain ourselves on it. Okay, let's get back on love. We, we as children of God are born out of love. We're created, created out of love. And our purpose is to be like Jesus, which is giving love. Um, I'm going to read from... Uh, I'm going to read now from... From the book of John, I'm going to go through chapter 15, a little bit of 14. 
And a lot of what I'm going to read is actually just direct quotations of Jesus speaking. And this takes place at the Last Supper, the Passover dinner. This takes place, the scripture I'm going to read takes place, I believe, the same day that they, they leave and they go to the Garden of Gethsemane and he's taken away to be questioned and falsely accused and tortured and killed. And he talks about love. So some of his last speaking here before he's taken away is about love. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna read a couple passages here from John 14. Um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. The Holy Spirit will never leave you. Verse 21. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Matthew chapter 2, verse 37 the Pharisees were giving Jesus a hard time and trying to trip him. You know, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And the second is equal to the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's Jesus' commandment to us. Verse 23, chapter 14 of John. All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Hmm. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And then verse, going down a little bit to verse 26, the Holy Spirit will teach you everything and will remind you of all the things that I've told you already. Now I'm going to go to verse, um, chapter 15. And this is when Jesus is speaking about him being the vine. I'm going to read it. I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. Anyone, young people, or, or I'm not picking on young people, but often young people, I'm in the Philippines right now, and, and uh, in America, in the Philippines, um, if you're living in a city type area, you don't grow stuff. And you might not be aware of what this means. And it's very simple. Uh, a plant, a vegetable plant, a flower plant, a grapevine. If branches get old and brittle, they don't produce fruit. They're not, they're not getting the juice from the roots. So on a grapevine, when you cut off all the old stuff that's, not, that's, that's shot, straggly, brittle, and you cut it off, whew, next year you get, this, you get all this new sprout. Same thing on a on a tree, you get a tree with a bunch of dead stuff, you cut it off and the tree just, it, it, block, it opens up. And that's what Jesus is talking about. And he's speaking, this is a very, very intimate, um, this is very intimate what's happening here right now. This is his last supper with his 12 apostles, his disciples. And he's speaking to them shortly before, he, before he's taken up, he's gonna be, taken away so it's very intimate and he says you have already been pruned 
and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And that's why God has me here with this. How to fight the hate in the world with the power of love. We need to be connected to the vine. We need to spend time with Jesus. Uh, I gave a message a couple months ago about having date night with Jesus. I did it a couple times. I got busy with life like everybody else. I spent time with the Lord. I spent special time with the Lord. Sometimes I'm studying the word. Sometimes I'm preparing a message. Sometimes I'm hanging out with him. But it's not the same thing as Friday night, 7 o'clock, Jesus. I have, I'm making a date with you, Jesus. At 7 o'clock on this Friday, I'm going to be with you. No agenda, no nothing. I'm just going to hang out with you and see where it goes. It's very, very intimate, very special. And you want to have more love in you. You want to be better connected to the divine. Make a date with Jesus like that. I'm going to again. I'm sorry if I did some. Galatians 2.20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The way to keep that going is to spend time with Jesus. It doesn't just, it happens just with change. We're, we're new creation in Christ. But the world and our flesh will keep working on you. And if you don't have intimate time with Jesus, that branch can get brittle and not produce fruit. Verse 6, anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. We sometimes try to satisfy so many people, including our own flesh. Sometimes we try to satisfy the agenda of the enemy. We don't even know it's his agenda, but it is because of so much deception in the world right now. And Satan, the greatest liar there is. When you produce much fruit, you're my true disciples. This brings great Glory to my Father. You know, in, in this scripture, John 15, Jesus uses the word remain ten times. That's his whole point here. And remain, the, the root word, I think, is meno, abide, not to depart, continue to be present. Hmm. Continue to be present. I don't know about you, but I have days where I don't feel like I'm very present with Jesus. To behold, to be kept, not to perish, to last, to endure. Verse 9. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I've told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow.
Have you ever noticed it's kind of hard to spread the love of Jesus with no joy? It goes hand in hand. Verse 12, this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There's no greater love than to lay down life. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And sometimes somebody insults us and we can't even forgive them for it. A friend, a brother and sister in Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let's love each other more. Let's be more forgiving. Let's be more connected to the vine. Let's produce more fruit. And the only way we're going to produce more fruit, the only way we're going to have victory against the enemy of hate in this world is by the love of Jesus Christ living in us. And the only way to keep that love alive and not to let it get um, lukewarm is by being connected to the vine, spending time with Jesus. Yes, study his words, yes, in prayer, but being intimate with Jesus. You know, it's interesting how Jesus and, and Paul and other people in the Bible talk about fruit. You know, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in Galatians. Jesus talks about fruit. You know, if you think about it, most fruit that we eat is sweet. Some, some is bitter. Most is sweet. Interesting, isn't it? And the outside's not. But the inside is sweet. The Holy Spirit will produce this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Would you say that's all sweet? Yes, that's sweet. Interesting. Sweet. And inside fruit, inside all that sweetness, there are seeds to produce more fruit. So beautiful. I've been really affected by my message <clears throat> Wednesday and, and today's message and what God has me personally with really, really, really putting it in front of me. How, how, how this is operating in the world with the enemy, the spirit of hate and the demonic activity. And we're not supposed to be afraid of that. Just be aware of it and plug into Jesus and operate in the power of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, but in the power of love, true love. And if we wonder how we can make a difference, everyone, you know, there's a movie and mm, I'm not going to mention it, but they had, they had Noah's Ark in it, kind of. It was a Hollywood movie, and in it, the, uh, the one of the main characters in the movie said, uh, "How could you change? I think how could you change the world?" And he said, "One random act of kindness at a time." And we shouldn't need to hear that for some major movie, Hollywood movie production. That should just be happening all the time, y'all. That should be when people look at us, they should just automatically see that. That that guy over there, that gal over there is a believer of Jesus because of acts of kindness, which is love. I know I'm kind of getting very personal here and kind of going off all over, bear with me. And we're in this together. Let us, as Christians, 
and people that are listening now that aren't Christians, Jesus loves you. He died for you. God created you. He makes no mistakes. He has a plan for you. And the only way to fulfill that plan, the only way to become an heir to everything he has for you, the only way to really truly receive his love, the only way to really truly be able to love others with that kind of love, the love that he puts in you, is to give your life to Jesus Christ now and say yes. Ask him to forgive you of your sins, turn from them, repent, turn to him, ask him to help you with those sins. And just tell him, yes, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe God rose you from the dead. Please be my Lord. Please give me your Holy Spirit to live in me. And he'll welcome you immediately into his kingdom to become a child of God. <laughs> First, I'm going to verse 12 again. This is my commandment. Love each other the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than lay down one's life for one's friends. Verse 14. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master does not confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I've told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. And then he goes into the world's hatred. He says, if the world hates you, remember hating me first. <laughs> so this whole thing about love, it doesn't always get you anywhere with the world, except having get you somewhere with God. And yes, get you somewhere in the world that because God uses his love in you to change the world, yes. But it could, it could bring out a heap of, of hate on you because the enemy doesn't want you around spreading the good news. And so Jesus says, remain in me and I will remain in you. God is in me. I'm in him. We're in you. You're in us. We're like one happy family, right? Well, actually, it is. God says in Ephesians, and his plan, his plan before we were born was to bring us in to his own family through Jesus Christ. And it is one family. And I pray to everyone that's in this family and I pray for people that are coming into this family. If I pray, Father God, that you help us give us the ability in our hearts to love you with everything we've got and Father God give us the ability in our hearts to love our neighbor as we love ourselves and give us the ability in our hearts to last brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray this in the name of Jesus. You can see this message is taking, a, it's doing a lot to me. This is who we are created to be. To love love God, to love Jesus, to love his spirit that lives in us, to love our brothers and sisters in Christ, and to love everyone else, everyone. This is the only way that we will have victory against the enemy, especially now. 
stay connected to the vine. Keep drinking the Jesus juice. Please go to www.holyspiritranch.ministries.org and uh, check us out. There's a lot of great stuff on there. If you don't know us, it'll it'll show you who we are. And uh, on Facebook, uh, hit like, please. If you don't like, hit don't like. Just let us know you're there. Communicate communicate with us. And uh, on uh, YouTube. I would love it if you hit the subscribe button. And uh, thank you for being here, everyone. You can see I'm really taken. I'm really, I'm really taken by this message of um, how how I personally have failed in so many ways to truly love the way. Jesus loves and he's put his spirit in me in you so stay connected to the vine spend time with Jesus if you love Jesus obey him and God and Jesus will live in you make you their home Oh, I, f I forgot. <laughs> if, if the Lord leads you to support this ministry financially, please do. And uh, I love you. And Jesus loves you. That's what's important is that Jesus loves you. All of you. Everyone. No matter what's happened in your life. God bless you. Bye.